Dear class 9 student, we'll continue chapter 2, that is, is matter around us pure? Uh, we have done type of mixtures. What is mixture we have defined? What is solution also we have defined? What is alloy we have defined? We have given the examples of solutions. Properties of solution is all done. Concentration of solution is also done. We have given you the formula. Concentration of solution equal to amount of solute divided by amount of solution. And or the mass of solute divided the mass of solution multiplied by 100. Or mass by volume percentage we have done. Mass of solute divided by volume of solute is multiplied by 100. Colloidal solution we have done. What is suspension we have defined. Properties also done. A Tyndall effect we have understood. Properties of colloid also done. And this table is also explained. Today we are going to discuss two point art, uh, articles 2.3 separation separating the components of a mixture we have learned that most of the natural substance are not chemically pure so we have what, whatever substance we see are not chemically pure different methods of separations are used to get individual components from a mixture so we use some method to separate these mixtures. Since the substances are impure, we have to separate it component from the mixture and get the pure substance. Substance makes it possible to study and use the individual component of uh, mixtures. Okay. So, so if we separate the uh, substance individual component of the mixture we can separate we can get the pure substance heterogeneous mixtures can be separated into their respective equipment by simple physical method like hand picking sieving filtration that we use in our day-to-day -day life so it is very easy heterogeneous it is very easy but it is difficult for homogeneous mixture sometimes special techniques have to be used for separation of components of a mixture uh, so now let us uh, find out the way of separating mixtures. How can we obtain colored components, colored components dye from blue and black ink? So separating colored component, colored components are called dye eh, from blue and black ink. So let us study this activity first. Fill up a beaker with water. So this is the beaker, this is the beaker, you fill it up with water. Put a, put a watch glass on mouth of the beaker. So this is the watch glass, this is the watch glass, you uh, keep this on, on the top of the beaker. Now start heating the beaker, now heat the beaker. We do not want to heat the ink directly, so in the watch, watch glass, ink is there okay so we don't want to heat it directly so that is why when it is heated the water from the water from the beaker is heated and this steams heat up the ink on the watch glass continue heating as the evaporation goes on and stop heating when they do not when, when you do not see any further change of the watch glass. So you see that when heated, the vapor will come out and you heat it till there is no vapor. Okay. Observe carefully and record your observation. After that, you can observe your observations. Okay. Now, answer. We have to answer this question. What do you think has the got, has got evaporated? from the watch glass. Is there a residue on the watch glass? What is your interpretation? Is the ink single substance pure or it is a mixture? So we have to 
find out whether it is a mixture or a pure substance. You find that ink is a mixture of dye in water. So it is a dye. Dye means color in water. Thus we can see we can separate the volatile component solvent volatile component solvent from its non-volatile solute by method of vaporization. So volatile we can separate so this may be a question. We can separate we can separate the volatile component solvent from its non-volatile solute by the method of evaporation. So this is uh, there is a question you can do you can write what what is method of evaporation okay so this is the question what is method of evaporation so we can define like this we can separate this volatile component of solvent from its non-volatile solute by method of evaporation how can we separate cream from milk another method another thing where how can we separate cream from milk nowadays we get full cream toned and double toned varieties of milk packed in poly, poly packs or tetra packs in the market this varieties of milk contains different amount of fats so depending upon the uh, uh, whether whether the milk is toned okay double toned or double toned double toned we, uh, we can get the uh, different amount of fats so let us do the activity again take some full cream tea milk in a test tube centrifuge it by using a centrifuging machine or two minutes if a centrifuge machine is not available in in the school so what is centrifuge centrifuge machine it is a device which rotates okay centrifuge device machine is a device which rotates okay very fast rotates very fast okay if a centrifuging machine is not available in school you can do this activity at home by using a milk churner milk churner used in kitchen okay if you means it is a rotating device okay you can do it at home also uh, by rotating a uh, using a milk churner okay if you have a milk dairy nearby visit it and ask how they separate cream from the milk and how they make the cheese or paneer from milk so how they you can ask the dairy dairy farm if you go to milk dairy and you can ask how we you prepare paneer and other milk products what do you observe the churning milk explain how separation of cream from the milk take place okay so sometimes the solid particles in the liquid are very small and pass through a filter paper for such particles the filtration technique cannot be used for separation so in filtration like milk you cannot separate the particles from the milk by using filtration technique such mixture are separated by centrifugation. Centrifugation is a method. It's a is a machine in which the container is rotated very fast. The principle is that denser particles are stored to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly. What is so we can write definition of centrifugation. Can write so 
definition is the principle is that the it, uh, denser particles are forced to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top and when spun rapidly so the question will be what is centrifugation okay this is the answer now we will see it in application see the application used in diagnostic laboratory for blood and urine tests used in home to separate butter from cream so used in washing machine to squeeze out water from wet clothes so these are the application you have to memorize so question will be this down the application So the question is write down the application of centrifugation method. Okay, used in diagnostic laboratory for blood and urine test. Used in diaries at home to separate butter from cream. Used in washing machine to squeeze squeeze out water from the wet clothes. So now, how can we another uh, separation method? How can we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquid? Immiscible liquid. How can we separate a mm, mixture of two immiscible liquid? So how can we separate? Okay. So let's do the activity and understand. Let us try to separate kerosene oil from water using a separating funnel. Separating this is a separating funnel. This structure is separating funnel. Okay. Pour the mixture of kerosene and oil and water in separating funnel. So you put kerosene water mixture in this funnel. Okay. Let it stand un undisturbed for some time so that separate separated layer of oil and water are formed after some time when it is kept for some time undisturbed you see the two i mean the two uh, two components of the mixtures that is water down and kerosene is lighter it will be above the water okay this is the stop cock this is the stop cock which we can control the flow of liquid mixture in it close the stop cup so first it is it is closed water i mean the mixture is uh, this is stop cup is closed choose the stop cup the separating funnel as the oil reaches the stop cup now open open the stop cup you allow the water to flow and when it will reach the kerosene oil the when the liquid uh, i mean the water water is already flown away you then the the layer of kerosene will come near uh, to come then you stop the stop cock you collect the water in another beaker okay so in this way we can uh, separate kerosene and water okay these are the two invisible Uh, liquids application to separate mixture of oil and water we use this method in the extraction of oil from its ore the lighter slag is removed from the top by this method to leave the molten iron at the bottom in the furnace the 
principle is that immiscible liquid separate out in layer depending on their density okay you can read it uh, there are questions but not that important okay you can just go through the book how can we separate a mixture of salt and ammonium chloride this is important this question you can take okay We have learned in chapter 1 that ammonium chloride changes directly from solid to gases since it is volatile. I mean, uh, uh, it is sublime. Okay. So, we know that in chapter 1 that ammonium chloride changes directly from solid to liquid. It does not have uh, solid to gaseous state. It does not have liquid state. Okay. The ammonium chloride does not have liquid state so to separate such mixtures that contains a sublimable volatile components from a non sublimable impurity salt in this case so ammonium uh, ammonium chloride is the salt okay it is sublimable impurity the sublimable process is used so what is the sublimable process? This is the sublimable process. Is used used some example of uh, solid which sublime sal sublime ammonium chloride, camphor, naphthalene, anthracene. Some example of solid which are sublime, which sublime. Are ammonium chloride. This, these are the sublim sublimable substance. You can see the diagram. This is a China China dish inside the funnel. Okay. So you put this cotton above the funnel top. Okay. Here it is top. Cotton uh, inverted invert the invert the this inverted funnel. Okay. This is the inverted funnel. Now inside this, the, uh, you, you cover the china dish with the inverted funnel. Now when you heat the china dish, the vapors of ammonium chloride comes out. So, 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 uh, ammonium chloride gets away by becoming vapor and salt remain in the china dish so we can separate the salt from ammonium chloride mixture okay Now we will do is the dye in the black ink a single color. So we will see that whether the dye in the black ink are single color. We will see that with the activity 2.7. Take a thin strip of uh, filter paper, draw a line on it using a pencil approximately 3 cm above the lower edge. So you put a line here in the lower edge, okay, with the pencil. Put a small drop of ink. You put a drop on it, a drop of ink. So ink is water soluble, okay, that is from the sketch pen or fountain pen okay so you take the ink from the you, 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 uh, drop a ink ink of sketch pen or fountain pen okay at the center of the line so here is the center of the line let it dry so keep it keep keep it for drying for some time
so let it dry the lower filter paper into a jar this is the glass jar let it be dry here jar beaker test tube containing water so this test tube this jar contains water okay above the above the water level as shown in the figure so the paper is just above the water inside this jar okay we will understand so keep it for some time watch carefully as water rises up on the filter paper so it will the water will rise up because it is a filter paper filter paper on the filter paper record your observation so will you record now see what happens when it is water is absorbed from the we by the what uh, this thing what you call filter paper what you observed on the filter paper as the water rises on it do you obtain different colors on the filter paper strip what according to you can be the reason for the rise of the color spots on the water strip so we will observe we will find out this questions the ink that we use was was water as the solvent and the dye is soluble in it as the water rises on the filter paper it it takes along with it the dye particles usually dye is a mixture of two or more colors so dye is makes maximum two or more colors okay it is a mixture of the colors component that is more soluble in water rises faster so the components of the color which is more soluble is will rise faster and in this way color gets separated so the less soluble will be below the most soluble component of the dye this process of this is this the, this process of separation of component of color is called so you can define this what is chromatography in this way you can separate the colors of the dye chroma in green words color this technique was first used for separation of color so this name was given chromatography and is the technique used for separation of separation of those solutes that dissolves in same solvent okay so question we can make more what is come here where it is used okay where next question will be where used okay so first part this question is what is chromatography where it is used okay for where it is used where it is used the answer is chromatography is used techniques used for separation of those solute okay those solutes that dissolves in same solvent with the advancement in technology newer techniques of chromatography have been developed to we'll study about the chromatography in high classes and what is the application of chromatography to separate colors in a dye pigment from the natural colors drugs from the blood very important you can write down question
so question will be write down the application of chromatography okay so answer will be to separate colors in a dye pigment from natural colors drugs from blood okay how can you separate a mixture of miscible liquid liquids so previously we have done immiscible liquids now immiscible mixtures okay we have done now we will do immiscible liquid that is that can be mixed up to uh, i mean liquid which are mixable <coughs> For this we use distillation process. How can we separate? Okay, we use this process of distillation. Let us try out to separate acetone and water from their mixture. Take a mixture in a distillation flask. So this is the called the distillation flask. Okay, this is the distillation flask. Take a mixture in a distillation flask, fill it with thermometer. So you put a thermometer from the top like this as shown in the figure. Arrange the apparatus as shown in the figure. Figure 2.9. This is the figure 2.9. Okay, heat it, heat the flux also, and it is it is it is uh, it is given support with the help of clamp distillation. This is the clamp distillation plus. This is the clamp, okay, which supports the distillation flask hit the mixture so it is a mixture of this liquid is a mixture of acetone and water acetone and water hit the mixture slowly keeping close watch at the thermometer so you see the thermometer and heat it the acetone vaporizes Acetone will vaporize and come through this chamber. Okay, chamber. So chamber, and it is again directed to the beaker. Okay, beaker. Now there is a jacket. This jacket, this shaded area is a jacket where cold water is flowing. Okay, cold water flowing. Here the cold water is inserted and here from here the out cold water is coming out. So what happens? The acetone will condense. The vapor acetone will condense and convert to liquid again. And we can collect it in the beaker. Okay? Acetone vaporizes condenses in the condenser and can be collected from the condenser's outlet. <coughs> water is left behind. So acetone is vaporized and water is left behind in the distillation flux. In this way petrol petroleum crude petroleum is also separated. So the question arises here, what do you observe as you start heating the mixture? At what temperature does the thermometer reading become constant for some time? What is the boiling point of the acetone? Why do the two components separate? So these are the questions rising from the experiment. This method is called distillation. It is used for separation of component of mixtures containing two immiscible liquids that boils without decomposition and have sufficient difference in their boiling points. So, distillation. Okay, from here. Distillation, it is used for separation. So, question I is what is distillation process?
properties used. Okay. Used. So this is the question. What is distillation process and where it is used? Okay. Distillation. It is used for separation of component of mixtures containing two mis two miscible liquid that boil without decomposition and have sufficient difference in their boiling points. To separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquid for which the difference in boiling point is less than 25K. So the difference, this process is used to separate a mixture to, 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 sep to separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquid for which the difference in boiling point is 25 Kelvin. Okay, a fractional distillation is used. For example, the separation of gases from air. Examples you can get gases from air, different fraction from petroleum product, etc. The, the apparatus is similar to that of simple distillation except that fractionary fractionating columns is fitted in between the distillation flask and the condenser. Simple fractional column is a tube packed with glass beads. The beads provide surface for vapor to cool and condense rapidly as shown in the figure. So you see the figure. So this is the distillation flask. And uh, here, this is the fractionating column. And Thermopolis fit here, fitted here. Okay, you heat it at the temperature, required temperature, the, the liquid, the mixed liquid is one of the fluid so will be vaporized and will be condensed here in the, with the help of a jacket, a condensing jacket, and it will be collected in the pure component will be collected in this beaker. This is fractional distillation, okay. Again, you heat it more, the another another component of uh, liquid will be vaporized and you collect it same way, in this way, you can separate all the components of the mixtures. So how, this is a very important thing, how can we obtain different gases from air? So air is composed of how much? 78% uh, of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen and others are the other gases like carbon dioxide, nit uh, argons, uh, many other ga gases are there, okay, hydrogen, okay, so we can separate this substance in the, in the if you see the chart. Air is a homogeneous mixture, so air is a, whatever air uh, surrounding us is a homogeneous mixture, can be separated into its component by fractional, fractional distillation. So we separate this with the help of fractionation. Now the flow, now we know that in the era of this corona pandemic, you see air is very important, this oxygen is very important because after corona, uh, the person who is suffering from severe corona needs oxygen, okay. so you should understand it very properly. Air is a homogeneous mixture and can be separated into its component by fractional distillation. The, the flow diagram, figure 2.11, shows the steps of the process. So, air, now, air is compressed and cooled by increasing pressure and decreasing temperature. So, air is cooled by increasing the pressure and decreasing the temperature. Then we get what? Liquid air. Allowed to warm up slowly in the fractional distillation column. 
so put this liquid air in the in the in this in this flask and allow them to warm up allow them to warm up so that at different temperature different uh, component of air will condense uh, will come out as a vapor and will be collected in the other beaker after using using a condensing uh, condensing jacket okay slowly in a fractionless column gas get separated at different heights so gas gets different height they get separated i mean different height separated at different heights so boiling point of water oxygen is minus 183 degree centigrade and percentage of air by volume is that is 20 means 20 or approximately 21 percent huh? now argon get uh, boiled in minus 186 degree nitrogen at 196 degree percentage is percentage of organ is 0.9 percent that is 1 percent almost 1 percent 78 percent for nitrogen so diagram shows the process of obtaining gases from air we want to we want oxygen gas from air we have to separate out all the other gases present in the air the air is compressed by increasing the pressure and is then cooled by decreasing the temperature to get liquid air this air is allowed to warm up slowly in a fractional distillation column where the gas get separated at different heights depending upon their boiling point so if you if you remember this chart you can you can uh, you can answer the question how do you separate the air, uh, different gases from air okay so question is question is how will you obtain the you can show this you can show this chart arrange the gases present in the air in the increasing order of their boiling point which gas forms the liquid first as the air is cooled so you have to, okay, we have to find out which gas 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 get cooled first so this is the actual distillation process let's see now first air is here with the help of this piston it is get it is compressed and temperature is decreased okay now the hot air is coming to this this compressed air is coming to this chamber where it the temperatures is lowered temperature is lowered now and this liquid freezing liquid is flown from down to top and it is taken out freezing uh, the cold liquid is taken out from here okay now the air is uh, whatever air which is compressed is, is is its temperature is also decreased with this phenomenon now the cold compressed air is flown to the separator okay the first is carbon dioxide as a dry ice you will get okay the carbon dioxide which will be dead then which, which will be separated as a dry ice okay and then we get other gases liquid air which will pass to this liquid air it is expansion jet from since it is a nozzle from here it will expand again okay 
nitrogen and nitrogen and argon will come out from here but the liquid will liquid oxygen will be collected here okay so we'll stop here today we'll continue on the next part thank you very much